Okay, guys, we are back. This is going to be a quick one. I am still working on some video autofocus for the system. Um, still feeling good about manual focus in a lot of cases. Uh, the Hummingbird video I put up a couple days ago, perfect example. If I'm trying to shoot something on the feeder and I want something coming in and out of frame, autofocus isn't going to do a good job there, um, especially things that are coming into frame. You know, it makes sense to focus where they're going to be. Um, but in the field, a lot of times, obviously I still want autofocus to work and want to see what I can do with it. So we're going to do some more tests, a lot of, uh, 4k 120 tests because that's, uh, the slower frame rates are where it struggles more. So settings wise, I've got tracking, uh, I've sensitivity turned all the way up and I have autofocus speed turned all the way up. I'm still using those both maxed and trying to get a feel for it. And I was using multi a lot for the zone but I tried using the actual area, um, especially for some of the birds in flight and keeping it on there. So let's dive into Resolve and I'm just gonna turn up my timeline settings to 4K, try to get the most resolution, see if my computer can handle it all. And here we go. Okay, so this is a turn. Don't ask me if he's a Caspian or a Common, I, I have no idea. But pretty good. These are all totally uncut. Uh, this was shot in log, and I use the auto color management. Um, but other than that, it's un untouched and ungraded. Uh, one quibble I do have with the camera so far. Uh, not just one. There's several. The ISO dial being one of them. Um, but I'm not loving that I can't customize what's going on uh, uh, with my record button. Uh, it looks like it lost them a little bit here. Yeah, it did. So it lost them towards the end when he started flying away. Looked pretty good in the first part of all that. You know, if we, if we just dial this back. So it found them quick. And when did we lose it? Mm-mm. Still has them. He's still sharp there. Still sharp there. Still sharp. Now, the I guess the issue with... Starts to lose him here. Yeah, so he started to lose him like once he kind of got into the darker spot. The trouble I think I had filming this is I don't know if I was still holding the back button focus. I can't remember. But I, there's a chance the camera could have like reacquired him in this case. Um, but because, I mean, it's hard to see when you're trying to track him, you're just trying to keep him in frame. Um, now I don't know if multi maybe would have done a better job here. I kind of doubt it. I think I had, I was pretty close to having the box on him anyway, but, um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I still think that that worked well enough. Um, you know, it, if I was using this for a clip, which maybe I would, I, I have lots of sharp footage. Um, yeah, I wish it held them the rest of the way i've never said it's the best autofocus video system but i'm more curious can we make it work here's another one this one i zoom in at one point so it definitely loses them when i zoom in i think i actually shot this one first yeah so i'm zooming here and then it reacquires it's not a parfocal lens it's it can't focus while it's zooming so let's see does it lose them in the same spot Not really. Like you're kind of losing contrast. He's turning into just like a white, sunny, golden mess. And then you can see the tree there. And he still has them though, even as he goes behind the tree. Hmm. Okay. What do we have next? Uh, this is a little kingbird. This was... What frame rate was this? This looks. This is 24 frames per second, but this was still F-log. So I didn't quick record this. So I'm still in the same set. Oh, you know what? No, this is this is 120. He's just not moving much. You could tell when he jumped. This is still 120. I think all my 24 frames per second clips were um, with the quick button. Which, that's what's annoying, is I would love the quick button to go to F-log 120, and instead it just goes to 24 frames per second with the film sim. Which... It's fine. It looks good. It's just not what I, I want. Um, you know, the command dial makes it a lot easier to 
switch modes. This is a boring clip. I'd have to bring up the shadows. Actually, let's just see for argument's sake if we brought up the shadows a little. Yeah, that looks good. There's no noise. It's nice, sharp. Look better on a tripod. But that looks a lot better when it, than when it was dark. Um, I could see when I was filming this. Well, that's a nice one. I wanted to try to capture the movement, but I couldn't even, like, you can see I can't even find the bird in the frame. So, um, yeah, so that's that's Trixie there. Forget that. Um, actually, I think that's another bird that I brought it in on. Now, I will say it is... I mean, again, this is slow-mo, so we're five times slower. It is slower to lock on to things the way I have the settings. It's definitely, like, noticeably slower than how I used to have the settings. Um, but once it gets it, though, it's stickier. And here, so what I was saying, yeah, here I could see it a little bit trying to go back and forth from the branch to the bird. They're kind of the same color and shape, but it held pretty well. Like none of this was manual. I wasn't adjusting anything manual. So like it's not hunting like crazy by any means. All righty. Um, let's see what else we have here. We're going to keep this short. So this, this is 24 frames per second. So this is the quick record. And this is where it was going back and forth to the, the branch on him here. This is like another one. It looked pretty good while I was shooting it through the viewfinder, but looking at it here, yeah, he's like, like I can see the focus moving off of him. I think, was that a different clip? Yeah, this is a different clip. So I didn't, that last clip I didn't like at all. That wasn't sharp. I've got the sound muted for this, but this would be a good example where if I was like shooting to actually get this footage, um, I'd be better to just shift this to manual because it, I don't need it to be, there's another bird I was looking for. I don't need it to be like continually trying to track him. For me, I think perch birds, I'm, I'm going to keep defaulting to manual um, and forget all the trees and things like that. Um, but for birds in flight, if I can track birds in flight with, uh, with autofocus, that would be great. I think this is all junk. I was just looking around for nothing. Uh, okay, so here's another track. This was 24 with the quick record button on these geese. And this did a great job. Even into the sun. Now, it's contrasty, but, you know, even against the dark clouds, it didn't lose them. I don't think it ever loses them here. Some other birds, it's not jumping around. And then here I give up, because once he hits those, I can't even see him anymore. So we gave up there. Uh, and then <laughs> this little one, I guess this is the last one. This is another turn, but you can see there's like no, no clip. I didn't even see him coming until whoop, and then he's gone. So overall, I think that's a pretty, uh, some kind of dirt bikes driving by. I think that's a pretty fair view at how the autofocus has been working for um, for wildlife so far. Um, not perfect, you know. There's definitely like from what I've seen, like a Z9 video looks probably more reliable. Um, but I'm really happy with the colors and dynamic range and everything out of the camera. And the autofocus is is by far better than anything else Fuji's put out. And again, like I said in other videos, comparing it to my old R5, I don't have them side by side, but from clips I've been looking at in my head, I would say they're pretty similar. The R5 jumped a lot for birds on branches uh, and birds in flight sometimes too, it would just like hunt for no reason. So whether it was it a little bit better, maybe, but I would say workflow is the same. Um, you know, with both cameras, if the bird or the subject is perched and it's going to be where I want it to stay, then manual focus makes a lot more sense. If it's something flying that manual focus is, uh, fly, birds in flight against the sky are really hard to manually focus because you don't have any reference points. If, if you're trying to manually focus on something in the trees, you can see where it's sitting and you can see with your focus peaking if you're too shallow or too far and you can adjust. In the sky, it's really hard to, to get them locked on. Um, 
So, so far, I'm, I'm pretty happy with these flight tests. I'm going to be going to uh, a Raptor demonstration tomorrow uh, at a medieval festival. So we're going to try lots of stills and do some video on that. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll see. Hopefully the birds will be going a little bit quicker. So we're going to see if we can get some good results. And uh, yeah, so we'll do more of these. But it's definitely workable. I mean, I've gotten lots of nice clips. Uh, even the turn when it went out of focus in that first clip, I still have lots of nice, sharp, crisp, good-looking footage before it lost them. Um, and again, you wish it never loses them because what if he did something really cool at the moment it lost them? So I do hope the algorithm improves. But I think anybody saying that the autofocus is unusable, I mean, it's definitely not unusable. It's very, very usable um, for you know people trying to make work on the camera. Um, you can get there. No camera is going to shoot perfect clips 100% of the time. So this is probably not near the best in class, but it's definitely not near the worst. It's somewhere in the upper middle um, you know, so I'm happy with that.